You're watching Spotlight on 5G on Telecom TV and this is The Slice. It's Thursday the 1st of July and here are the news headlines. AT&T shifts its 5G core to Microsoft Azure. Mavenir gains further open RAN traction. Momentum builds for open enterprise 5G. And a happy 30th birthday to GSM. AT&T has taken a critical step in its next generation network strategy by essentially handing over the development and management of its 5G core platform to Microsoft Azure in a deal that will also see the operators related technology and staff transfer to the hyperscaler. Now it's not the first major operator to put its trust in a public cloud platform for critical functionality, but given AT&T's scale and industry influence, this is a significant and defining moment in the relationship between the public cloud and the telco community. Mavenir has gained further traction in the open RAN market, striking a deal to provide Legado networks with remote radio units and open RAN software for the US alternative operator's enterprise mobile network rollout plans. Legado, which has a license for the 1.6 gigahertz band that can be used for terrestrial 5G and IoT networks, has aspirations to build and manage private enterprise wireless networks using multi-vendor systems. It is already engaged with Rakuten Communications Platform and Nokia for the development of various network elements. Legado's agreement with Mavenir is just the latest example of open enterprise 5G activity. Another is the unveiling of OmniRAN, a virtualized radio access network system developed by server hardware vendor Quanta Cloud Technology, QCT. It is working in partnership with Radisys, which brings its Connect 5G RAN software to the mix, and Intel, which is providing its FlexRAN reference implementation and third generation Xeon scalable processors. QCT says OmniRAN has already been put to work in smart manufacturing deployments. And while we focus very much on 5G this year and even look forward towards 6G, let's sit back for a moment, light some virtual candles and sing happy birthday in Finnish to GSM, which today marks the 30th anniversary of the first conversation over a 2G digital cellular network. That call was placed by Harry Holkeri, then Prime Minister of Finland, over Radio Linear's 900 MHz network, which was built using technology from two companies, Siemens and Tele Nokia. And Tele Nokia, you might have guessed, was a subsidiary of the then industrial conglomerate Nokia. Well, we'll certainly drink to that later. And for more news and analysis, visit the Telecom TV news pages or sign up for our 7 a.m. editorial mailer. That was your daily slice of news. Time now to take a closer look behind the headlines to find out what this means for service providers and the telecoms industry. And joining me now is my editorial colleague, Ray Lemaitre. Ray, today's top story concerns two companies that are not actually exhibiting physically in Barcelona. AT&T selling its network cloud operations to Microsoft Asia. It's a big story. Yes, this really is massive news for the industry and another example of the ever closer relationship between traditional telcos and the public cloud giants. AT&T is, in a nutshell, handing over the development and management of the intelligent heart of its 5G network, the core platform, to Microsoft Azure. In order to do this effectively, it's transferring its network cloud platform technology and an unspecified number of technical staff to Azure, which will run and further develop the tech on its Azure for Operators platform. Uh, the agreement is massive for both parties and could be the start of an even bigger relationship if all goes well. As AT&T says the Alliance provides a path for all of AT&T's mobile network traffic to be managed using Microsoft Azure technologies. This surely hints at the potential migration of the operator's 4G core to the hyperscaler as well. 
Yeah, this is absolutely fascinating, Ray. AT&T has been at the forefront of, of Toco Cloud development work, going back to perhaps when it first announced its ambitious plans for the virtualization of its network. So what exactly does AT&T get out of this new deal? Well, supporters of the public cloud have long touted reduced costs and accelerated R&D as two of the significant benefits for telcos. And AT&T states that this move will substantially reduce its engineering and development costs, while early access to Microsoft's cloud, AI and edge technology will give it, and I quote, the flexibility it needs to rapidly innovate and launch new services and customer experiences enabled by 5G. So a real ratification there of the, the claims. Uh, for Azure, it gets the experience of running what AT&T describes as real-world production 5G workloads. Really important, that. As well as a great deal of cloud-native telco-ready applications. And this is where the relationship gets even more interesting, because using the AT&T technology plus the capabilities it already has from its acquisitions of Metaswitch and Affirmed Networks, this deal enables Azure, and I quote, to help operators across the world deliver highly reliable, cost-effective and secure 5G services to consumer and enterprise customers. So uh, Azure will be taking AT&T's capabilities and offering it to other operators. Uh, AT&T's CTO Andre Fuich spells this out very clearly by saying, the next step is making this capability accessible to operators around the world and ensuring it has the resources behind it to continue to evolve and improve and do it securely. Microsoft's cloud expertise and global reach make them the perfect fit for this next phase. So that was what Andre Furch had to say. So this then looks like yet another pitch to the global operator community to use an existing cloud-oriented mobile network platform in much the same way as Rakuten Mobile is pitching its wares via its Rakuten communications platform, NTT Docomo is doing with its 5G Open RAN ecosystem, and India's Geo Platforms aims to do as well. What an extraordinary era this is going to be for communications networking. Yeah, extraordinary indeed, and great analysis there, Ray. As you say, this could have massive ramifications throughout the global telecoms industry. Okay, let's take a look at our next two stories, both somewhat related. First, Mavenir and its deal, uh, and it's been making a lot of them recently, and this is the deal with Legado Networks. Yeah, so uh, Mavenir has really stepped forward as the most prominent open RAN specialist in the past few months. Uh, with multiple industry engagements, partnerships and technology developments. Uh, its latest engagement with Legado Networks is an example of its breadth and ability to adapt because it's not only providing its open RAN software, but also remote radio heads. And all the tech has been developed to run in Legado's L-band 1.6 gigahertz spectrum. Now, Mavenir has taken advantage of this MWC week to showcase its various talents, having announced its deal to be a major open RAN partner to Axiata in Asia, highlighting its role in Deutsche Telekom's ORAN town and Orange's experimental cloud native network in northern France, as well as building a standalone open RAN based campus network with NTT data in Germany, and even more. So there's little doubt that its business is growing significantly, so I do wonder if we might see the re-emergence of Mavenir's plans for an IPO sometime soon. Oh, one to watch out for, certainly. Okay, now on to QCT and its OmniRAN release. There's so much happening with OpenRAN at the moment. Yes, the Legado Mavenir relationship uh, actually highlights a growing focus for the Open RAN community, and that's the private enterprise wireless network. Uh, while major telco deployments naturally attract a lot of attention, many companies developing the enabling technology elements for an open disaggregated mobile network see the enterprise sector as a significant early opportunity. The CEO of European Open RAN company Acceleran, Frederick van Derm, stressed this in a recent interview with Telecom TV when he noted that because enterprises already have plenty of experience with Kubernetes, cloud native processes and IT infrastructure and would be operating a network on a much smaller scale than a CSP, 
Adopting an open RAN architecture is a quicker and easier process for an enterprise. So it's no surprise to see that a growing number of tech firms are developing solutions for the private wireless market. The latest being a combination of QCT, Radisys and Intel. Now, QCT, also known by its full name of Quanta Cloud Technology, has developed OmniRAN, a virtualized radio access network system that, while it could also be put to use in a disaggregated wide area network, looks primed and ready for IoT and enterprise deployments. Indeed, QCT says the pre-integrated hardware and software combo is already up and running in smart manufacturing use cases such as safety AI for environmental control, high resolution streaming for quality control, AR goggles for maintenance and repair, and autonomous guided vehicles for equipment transport. You know, we've talked a lot about the enterprise sector and how 5G could finally unlock significant business for CSPs. Well, let's see. I mean, for now, it's the vendors who are certainly doing most of the heavy lifting. And finally today, we have an anniversary to celebrate. Yep, as if we needed a reason to pop a cork and wet our whistles. Let's raise a glass, maybe a bit later, to GSM, which, as Guy mentioned earlier, broke its voice call duck 30 years ago today on 1st of July 1991, when the Finnish Prime Minister called another politician to extol the virtues of the new technology and, of course, comment on how clear the call was. Uh, Prime Minister Holkeri is reported as saying it was like speaking to a neighbour. I guess, as long as you like your neighbour. Uh, it's hard to stress just what an impact the development and spread of GSM has had on the world and the role that companies such as Siemens and Nokia, as well as the support of politicians such as Holkeri, have had on the development over the years. Uh, in fact, Nokia has very kindly let us know that its current CEO, Pekka Lundmark, was on the scene when GSM was being put through its test and measurement paces in early 1991. Lundmark was working as client lead for network operator Radio Linear at that time and was involved in 2G's development. And here he is now running one of the biggest companies in 5G. But uh, oh, how times have changed. Haven't they just? And times, they keep on a changing. And of course, news continues to land in our inboxes. The emails keep on coming. Yep, they certainly do, Guy. Um, and in fact, just while we've been talking, I've had an email in from one of OpenRAN's other big major companies, NEC, um, and it has just announced the launch of carrier-grade cloud-native OpenRAN software supporting its digital beamforming of massive MIMO. And that is a really big deal for operators, any operator that's looking at OpenRAN. And that solution is going to be available globally from the beginning of next year, according to NEC. So, I mean, OpenRAN really has been one of the big trends this week, no doubt. Yeah, it certainly has. And that's a, that's a great little story there just come in. Thank you, Ray. Well, it's once again lunch hour in Barcelona, and it's always been something of a challenge at MWC. You know, you never quite get what you want, which is why we decided to make our own. And we want our viewers to decide which is their favourite. Yes, it's time to conclude the great tapas taste off. Over these four days, Ray and I have been going head to head with our favourite tapas treats and asking you to decide which one is best by voting in our daily website poll. Ray, it's make or break day for you. No pressure. What are you putting up today as your tapas choice? Well, you could say that I've saved the best until last, Guy, because uh, it's those spicy Spanish potatoes. Patatas bravas. I mean, you, you simply cannot go to Barcelona or Spain and not have a portion of these absolute beauties. I, I, I can't imagine that you've got anything that would be beating that. Oh, I, want, I want to eat these now, <laughs> again. I, oh, I, fantastic. Uh, I gotta say, it, it is a Barcelona staple and it is a cracking good tapas. Well, I'm pulling out the big guns because all I can say is little, crispy nuggets of 
crispy coated ham and cheese goodness. It's the croquetas. Who doesn't like one oh. of these? Now these should be deep fried, but really that's a real mess. So we'll just shallow fried these. But you know, you really want to get them nice and deep fried and golden and crunchy. And ooh, yeah. they're just oozing out goodness there. So there you go. I'm putting that, my, I my have, ham and cheese croquetas against you. I, I have to say they looked pretty good, uh, shallow fried. Even I might go and vote for those. Not really, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, we shall find out what our audience uh, decides on. Which vote would you select from the menu if you were taking a break from walking the length and breadth of the Fira? Well, you only have a few hours left to make your choice. And then we will re reveal the winner on our live after show today, which starts at 5 p.m. UK time. And Ray, we shall see you later and find out who emerges victorious from the great tapas taste off. Still to come on Spotlight on 5G today. If you haven't yet watched our Strategy Outlook program, then it's now available to view on demand. Today's show takes an in-depth look at the very topical 5G cloud with interviews and roundtables. We reach the climax of our new series, Top 10 Mobile Moments, with episodes three down to the coveted number one spot. This series just keeps getting better and better. And we finish the day with the After Show Live. And this week, the program comes with some special features. To help recreate the evening networking we all love so much in Barcelona, we have our Telecom TV Uncorked segment, where we explore the main wine regions of Spain. So get to know what you're drinking when you return to MWC. Plus your after show, where we're asking you to share your memories of past events and after show parties. We also have a comprehensive collection of supporting videos on our Spotlight on 5G site, all available to watch on demand. They offer plenty of insights and deep dives into 5G, complementing our daily news program. As a preview of what you can watch today, Keith Despain, director of Intel's Network Builder program, explains how open architectures and cloud native can unleash innovation in 5G from core to RAN. And Jesper Eriksson of Noviflow discusses the telco cloud and the next generation central office. But first, here's Mary Paul Odini of HPE on the Next G Alliance and its sustainability focused Green G Working Group. The Next G Alliance um, is an ATIS initiative and it was launched in October 2020 uh, to really advance the North American mobile technology uh, leadership in 6G uh, and beyond over the next decade. Uh, the Next G Alliance will encompass the full life cycle, uh, starting with R&D, manufacturing, standardization and market readiness. And there are different working groups. Um, the first ones have been the Roadmap Working Group and the Green G Working Group. And uh, it's interesting to see that uh, the Green G Working Group, um, day one, was seen as a mandatory uh, working group to address uh, you know, all the challenge we have with uh, climate change uh, and the impact of the telecom industry, which is like 3% of the uh, global energy consumption, according to GSMA and the growth of this impact, which is like three digit uh, until 2026. So there is really a, a need to do something. And this working group uh, has the mission to really reduce um, this impact. I like to talk a little about uh, the telco cloud and, and, and what it looks like and, and the way our customers look at it. You can really look at the telco cloud as the next generation central offices. You know, central offices used to be housing proprietary hardware and you know, boxes from different vendors. But today they're more and more looking like data centers with racks and racks of, of servers and basically a data center fabric connecting all these services. And what you see here on the picture is a typical central office where you have mobile and fixed access on the left coming in, and then you run a number of virtualized services in the central office, like virtual BNG, virtual user plane function, and of course, also uh, security services like virtual firewalls and virtual DDoS. And then, you know, different 
service LAN or GI LAN services like DCP optimization and CGNAT. As we see it, we just see the opportunity for these open architectures that are unleashed by 5G to begin to really show off the innovation that the CSPs can bring to the marketplace and to their customers. And their customers will be demanding these types of, of open capabilities to move quickly on new technologies. Everything from you know, working on the core all the way out to the open RAN architectures that are now emerging. And then we also see some of the capabilities of cloud native technology continue to expand into these architectures and bring the services in a way that, as Daryl said, you know, in a very innovative way. And we have yet to see what that will be, but we look with excitement as we bring the foundational technology from Intel into these offerings. You can watch the full length versions of these three videos along with so much more on Telecom TV. Well, that's all from the Slice for this week, but the program will return after a short break. In the meantime, you can stay up to date with the latest news and analysis on telecomtv.com. For now though, thanks for watching and goodbye.